hallmarks of the American Navy today is its amazing logistical reach and capability. Through a complex network of overseas bases, strategically positioned supply ships, and decades of experience operating around the world, the U.S. Navy can sustain combat and patrol operations for months at the far ends of its supply chains, a capability which to this day remains unmatched. The grounding and loss of the wooden sailing ship USS Trenton in American Samoa in 1889, at the far end of that era's supply chains, represented the end of the age of sail in the Navy and the beginning of the rise of the new American Navy. We have already discussed how the Navy brought American commerce to Japan, Korea, and various islands in the Pacific. Ten years after the loss of the Trenton, the American Navy sailed into Manila Bay in the Philippines and annihilated the antiquated Spanish fleet right under the noses of the shore batteries. The absolutely overwhelming strength of the American force, coupled with accurate gunnery and aggressive tactics, resulted in the destruction of the Spanish fleet without the loss of a single American sailor killed. The victory also brought the United States into the unexpected possession of a large chain of Pacific islands, strengthening American claims and influence in the Pacific, and accelerating the U.S. towards conflict with the burgeoning naval power of Japan. This rise, however, was not just based on the adoption of improved steel armored ships, like the USS Maine, it also included other new steps, like the adoption of supply ships that would accompany and support fleets, as well as a formalization of naval policies, plans, and study through the new Naval War College, founded in 1884, that institutionalized naval combat planning. Thus, the new technologies and capabilities that rapidly developed in the last two decades of the 19th century were coupled with new naval tactics that took full advantage of the heavily armored steel ships, steam power, and improved logistical capability. In this way, the Navy rapidly transformed during the two decades from the 1880s to the beginning of the 20th century into a structure that would be recognizable even today. The Navy's newfound capability, new tactics, and new strategies were ultimately articulated as a vision of sea power projection by the leading national strategist and naval thinker of the time. Naval Academy graduate Alfred Thayer Mahan, one of the founders of the Naval War College and later its president, published his most famous work in 1890, The Influence of Sea Power on History, one of over a dozen books he published on naval strategy and tactics and it remains required reading for officers studying at the Naval War College today. Although Alfred Mahan revolutionized naval thought and was an active participant in its development throughout his 40-year naval career, it is another famous naval contemporary of Mahan's who led the U.S. Navy in what would be both the first naval battle between an overseas foreign power since the War of 1812 and also a spectacular validation of Mahan's doctrines. Today, we feature a collection of objects that belonged to Admiral of the Fleet George Dewey, the only naval officer to ever hold that title. George Dewey graduated from the Naval Academy in 1858, and his career spanned from before the Civil War into the 20th century, from the small wooden sailing fleet to the Great White Fleet 60 years later. Our objects today, specifically a commemorative plate with key dates in Dewey's career, tell the story of this naval leader who played a prominent role throughout the development of the new American Navy, culminating with when he took on the antiquated and aging Spanish fleet in the harbor of Manila in the Philippines on May 1, 1898. In February of that year, the USS Maine had blown apart in a fiery explosion in Havana Harbor, 
during the Cuban insurrection against Spanish rule. This event captured the attention of the American media and contributed to the declaration of war on Spain. The Assistant Secretary of the Navy at the time, Theodore Roosevelt, ordered Dewey to position his ships near Manila in case of war, and later resigned in order to go fight with the now famous Rough Riders. Commodore Dewey then made an important decision, which would set a precedent for how the Navy operates today, by purchasing two coaling ships in order to keep his squadron fueled and supplied while fighting on the other side of the world. On April 21st, the American Navy instituted a blockade of Cuba, and at the same time, in response, the Spanish severed diplomatic relations with the U.S. On April 23rd, Spain declared war on the U.S., and the U.S. responded in kind on April 25th. When war was declared, Commodore Dewey immediately started searching for Spanish ships. One week later, on April 30th at night, Commodore Dewey began advancing into Manila Bay. Spanish forts opened fire, even though the Americans were out of range. On the morning of May 1st, Commodore Dewey coolly uttered the immortal phrase, You may fire when ready, Gridley, to the commanding officer of his flagship, the armored cruiser Olympia, thus beginning one of the most lopsided naval victories in history. With no sailors killed, the United States fleet annihilated the outgunned Spanish fleet, with significant consequences. The victory marked both the arrival of the 20th century and the arrival of the U.S. on the world stage as both a colonial and naval power. This led to American control of the Philippines, further war with Spain over Cuba and its eventual seizure, and most significantly, a hastening of the collision course with Japan in the Pacific Ocean. In fact, many of the various sites around Manila that had been occupied by Spanish gun batteries would be later occupied by American batteries during World War II, and some of the most famous actions of the Philippines, like Corregidor, occurred on spots where 40 years earlier Spanish artillery had desperately fought against an overpowering American foe. We now go to Dr. Scott Harmon for a little bit more about our objects and their owner. Welcome, I'm Dr. Scott Harmon. We are at the Naval Academy Museum uh, looking at some of the 100 objects that represent American naval history. Uh, this time we're going to look at uh, artifacts that uh, relate to Admiral George Dewey. Uh, we have in this case uh, a uniform coat, a dress hat, uh, a commemorative plate, uh, a tobacco humidor, and some medals. Uh, George Dewey gained fame in the Spanish-American War, where he led the American squadron in uh, battle against a Spanish squadron in Manila Bay. Uh, it was not much of a battle. Uh, the American ships were so much superior to the Spanish ships. Uh, it was a decisive victory. Very few uh, American sailors were injured. But the consequences of this war, the Spanish-American War, were immense, especially of this battle, because at the end of the battle, we replaced Spain as overlords of the Philippines. We had American forces there uh, until well after World War II. The Spanish-American War brought the United States to the forefront of international players. We were now a world power. Our Navy had achieved that in two battles, this one at Manila Bay, another at, uh, off Cuba. And the consequences of this battle were, as I said, very large because we were now in the Philippines. We had interests in parts of the world off the continental United States and we needed to be, have a world navy to protect those interests. And because we were in the Philippines, this made the United States and the Philippines a prime target as Japan grew to power uh, leading up to World War II. 
So uh, the consequences of this battle uh, were that we were a world power, the, the Navy was a force to be reckoned with, and we would continue growing the United States Navy until after World War II, we were the, the greatest Navy in the world. Thank you.